Pakistan's Bombardier Global 6000 is being outfitted with the Aselson HAVA SOJ standoff, jamming suite to disrupt radars and communications at long range, expanding the Pakistan Air Force's sea dead options with a claimed standoff envelope beyond 500 kilometers. India has publicly framed long-range air defense and counter, high-value asset tactics, particularly S-400 employment during Operation Sindhua and follow-on kill chains, as decisive against large non-stealthy enablers such as AWACS and Yield Jammers, making such aircraft high payoff targets in any renewed exchange where long-range SAMs, air-launched missiles, and ISR queuing converge into rapid strikes and interceptions at scale. What HAVA SOJ adds? The PAF Global 6000 conversion integrates Aselson's HAVA SOJ for radar jamming, comms jamming, and ELINT, leveraging DRFM, wideband receivers, and active electronically scanned arrays to degrade surveillance and fire control networks from standoff distances, enabling strike packages to approach under reduced radar fidelity and communications coherence. Reports around induction emphasize beyond 500 km effects as a concept of employment, implying standoff geometry designed to stay outside adversary SAM rings while still impacting early warning and data links, similar to Turkish Air Force concepts on bombardier platforms under the same program lineage. Turkish Aerospace handles structural and systems integration on the Global 6000, power distribution, cooling, fairings, and mission system interfaces, consistent with the 2AF program suggesting a mature path to airworthiness and operational utility for the PAF airframe. Why India will prioritize it? High-value airborne enablers are target number one in Indian doctrine during escalation, as seen in public statements after Operation Sindhua, where the S-400 was credited with kills, including a Pakistani AW and C, eliminating airborne C-2, early warning, and jamming platforms rapidly collapses the opposing side's situational awareness and reduces fighter survivability and missile kinematics efficiency. Indian discourse places S-400 and long-range kill chains as game changers, with the 40N6 missile providing deep reach against large radar signature targets, pairing that with multi-source queuing, fighter CAPs with very long-range AAMs, and ground-based tracking constraints AWACS-U aircraft into narrow, vulnerable corridors, a risk calculus highlighted in Pakistani commentary reconsidering global 6,000 U employment near combat fronts. The larger RCS and predictable mission orbits of standoff jammers make them economically lucrative targets. A single intercept or strike imposes disproportionate operational paralysis compared to the cost of the interceptor missile, aligning with the logic of maximum damage for minimal expenditure that Indian planners underline post Sindhua. S-400 Engagement Geometry The S-400's 40N6 is widely sighted at up to 400 km reach against high-altitude targets, with engagement envelopes intended to prosecute high-value aircraft like AWACS and SOJ platforms at significant standoff ranges. Indian reporting and analysis after May 2025 repeatedly reference these parameters when discussing Sindhua's air defense performance. A notional kill chain marries long-range radar tracks, ELINT and space-based ISRQs, and fighter or SAM assignment. If the HAVA SOJ operates at or beyond 500 km standoff from frontline threats, Indian batteries positioned forward and backed by overlapping radars could still achieve firing solutions if the airframe's orbit approaches the 40 and 6 ring, or if geometry shifts due to mission needs, tanker rendezvous, or terrain masking constraints. The engagement feasibility increases with altitude. Standoff jammers prefer high altitude for sensor horizon and link geometry, but that also optimizes radar line of sight and interceptor kinematics for 40N6 shots, compressing the sanctuary zone that SOJ crews must manage tactically during a shooting conflict. Operation Sindhua Precedent Public timelines of the May 2025 conflict note intense cross-border strikes and counter-strikes with rapid escalation. While Indian accounts emphasize S-400 performance and claimed kills, including an AEW and C, which, if accurate, illustrate the vulnerability of large, non-stealthy airborne enablers to long-range SAM systems under active ISR queuing 
and permissive rules of engagement. Indian reportage and derivative analyses also reference the displacement of Pakistani AEW and sea operations westward due to S-400 threat rings during hostilities, a behavior that would similarly constrain a global 6,000 SOJ orbit and reduce its effective jamming leverage over eastern approaches if those rings are forward positioned. The acknowledgement of long-range air defense shaping the air battle rather than exclusively fighter-on-fighter -fighter engagements matches. Broader trends in integrated air and missile defense suppressing high-value nodes, where airborne ISR, AEW and C and yield platforms become primary targets early in the timeline. Project Kasha and Future Pressure Indian discourse has highlighted a domestic long-range air defense initiative commonly discussed as Project Kasha, intended to field indigenous long-range SAM capabilities to complement or succeed imported systems. While technical specifics remain scarce in public domain, the strategic implication is a denser, multi-layered LRSAM environment tightening airspace for large support aircraft on the Western Front over time. A layered mix, S-400 now, with future indigenous long-reach interceptors, expands continuous no-go volumes for high-value targets, reducing sanctuary geometry for SOJ orbits and complicating route planning, tanker tracks, and comms relay positions during crisis. This trajectory magnifies the payoff asymmetry. Each additional long-range battery raises the cost of operating a single expensive yield jet, incentivizing India to prosecute the asset early and forcing Pakistan to either hold it far to the rear or accept elevated attrition risk. How India would prosecute. Ground-based kill, detect via long-range surveillance radars and passive sensors, correlate with space-based and elent inputs, assign S-440 and 6 if geometry closes within envelope, time on target can be minutes, and salvo doctrine increases kill probability against a large, electronically active target even with ECM in play. Air-to-air -air reach, fighter CAPs with long-range AAMs under AWACS control can bracket SOJ orbits if they edge closer for effect, or when compelled by terrain weather, Synchronized with ground-based threats, this produces a multi-axis dilemma that denies simple countermeasure solutions at a single frequency band or bearing. Deep strike option. If the global 6000 recovers to predictable bases, Indian planners, citing Sindhua precedents, would consider cruise missile or precision ballistic options against airfield shelters and mission support nodes. As Pakistani commentary already alleges occurred to high-value airborne assets on the ground during that conflict. Missile ranges and roles likely employed. S-440N6, up to 400 km nominal range against high-altitude targets designed for high-value airborne enablers. Effective altitude band and seeker logic are aligned with counter-AWACS and counter-jammer missions, providing the primary ground-based reach for first salvo attempts. Air launched options. While specific Indian air to air missile allocations are not detailed in these sources, the doctrinal point is that long range AAMs from Rafil or Su 30 formations complement the ground ring, compressing escape windows. Their use in synchronized traps during Sindhu style surges would be consistent with public Indian claims of air superiority tactics in 2025. Land attack and anti runway tools. In Sindhu narratives, India is described as employing standoff crews and precision weapons against key sites. Applying that model to deny global 6,000 sortie generation would involve timing strikes against recovery bases, yield ground support shelters, and mission planning cells to induce system-level paralysis rather than just airframe attrition. Why sitting ducks under certain conditions? Signature and predictability, a large business jet, Based SOJ has a bigger radar cross-section and operates in steady orbits to maximize jamming geometry, making it easier to track and to time missile flyouts compared to maneuvering fighters. This contrasts with expendable or distributed U nodes that can accept losses with lower strategic impact. Kinematics mismatch. At altitude, long-range SAMs enjoy favorable engagement energetics against a subsonic, steady target. 
DRFM and Toad Dike's complicate terminal phases, but Salvo Doctrine and Seeker Diversity reduce the odds that a single countermeasure set will suffice against integrated networks. Economics. One intercept can remove a national-level capability built around a small fleet and bespoke ground support, delivering the kind of maximum damage for minimal effort payoff Indian briefings celebrated after Sindhua, particularly when compared with the cost and risk of repeated deep fighter penetrations. Constraints on PAF employment. Standoff limit versus effect. To avoid 40 and 6 rings, the SOJ must hold farther back, diluting jamming power at key emitters and reducing seed dead utility against Indian IADS. Pakistani commentary has noted reconsideration of such platforms, wartime utility under S-400 pressure after the 2025 clashes. Airbase vulnerability. If orbits are constrained, the asset's ground footprint becomes the focal point. Predictable recovery cycles and limited hardened support infrastructure invite preemptive or follow-on strikes similar to those described in the Sindhua pattern of operations. Force structure scarcity. With a single converted global 6,000 noted by open sources at Trishan or even prolonged grounding for battle damage repair would erase a major component of PAF's electronic attack strategy, compounding the risk calculus of committing it forward. Indian escalation ladder against SOJ. Phase 1, detect, classify, geolocate the SOJ orbit via passive and active sensors. Push forward S-400 coverage or Q-long-range fighters to pressure the orbit away from effective standoff, limiting jamming returns and forcing fuel burn on evasive routing. Phase 2, if geometry permits, assign 40 and 6 salvo while presenting simultaneous air-to-air -air threat axes. Absorb ECM and expend decays on the first shots. Retain follow-on shots to exploit any course corrections that open up better lead pursuit envelopes. Phase 3, if airborne kill is denied, transition to base denial, time crews or ballistic strikes against ground support and shelters, while Cyber and Yu attacks target mission planning cells to delay turnarounds and degrade sortie assurance, a pattern consistent with Sindhu-era narratives. Bottom line for planners. The HAVA SOJ Global 6000 meaningfully raises PAF's electronic attack ceiling in peacetime and limited crises. But during a shooting war under an S-400 umbrella and tightening indigenous long-range SAM layers, its survivability is conditional and its operational leverage shrinks as the standoff increases beyond optimal jamming geometry. Operation Sindhu demonstrates an Indian preference to neutralize high-value airborne nodes early through layered, long-range fires and ISR fusion, which maps directly onto any future prosecution of a PAF SOJ platform that edges into reachable arcs or is caught on the ground within predictable windows. In that calculus, large U assets become high payoff gold, targets that promise disproportionate campaign effects for each missile expended, aligning with India's post-2025 emphasis on quick suppression of adversary enablers for maximum damage at minimum cost and risk.